Episode 19, Black Flash. <laughs> Nature's coming for you. I'm waiting for this to be like a, a demonstration of his ability, his power. I know he's gonna kick, kick ass. Oh wow, we can actually just stop things with his voice. I thought it was just, you know, destructive power. When enemies become friends. Ooh, interesting. He said the same thing about Megumi though, didn't he? They're both holding back. There we go. Redeem yourself for your terrible introduction. <laughs> what is it with these shows and like deliberately giving you the worst impression of these characters when they're introduced and then making you feel terrible for having a snap judgment about them? I'm looking at you, Demon Slayer, and all of the Hashira. It's gonna be so cool if this actually happens, if the students actually fight together with the, the faculty. All these petty grudges just disappear. I like how he's their, their ace. Don't forget Toto though. Toto and Yuji now have the power of brotherhood on their side. Have some faith, my dude. <laughs> like, we got Gojo too, no? Yeah, there you go, there you go. Miwa has lost her sword and is asleep. Nature is angry! <laughs> there you go, fighting nature with nature. No! Knew it! That's... Unbelievably sad. Why is that so sad? Oh my god! Just a just a straight up punch. Sometimes the most terrifying, horrifying thing. Was he he was about to do it, right? He was about to do it. Ooh, mustard leaf. He's holding back. He's been holding back. Everyone get out of the way. There you go. That's more of what I was expecting. That really sucks that it takes that toll on him. It's also pretty clear just from the fact that there's smoke, yeah, that he just basically blew him away for a little while. Oh, he saw her coming! And he was sword! <laughs> no. He was not gonna be happy. Oh, we actually cut him though. Found a weak spot for what that's worth. Okay. Okay, this is this is straightforward, I think. I think I got this one. That is a lot of money. Don't tell that to the that one faculty girl who is all the money. Again, just knocking it back. That's awful. That's so devastating. But what about Nui? Is Nui actually... Is Nui gone? Or can he reincarnate them or something? Interesting. So never actually really gone. That's a huge relief. Totality! They did such a great job with the sequence of events. Like, had I not seen the Maki fight with Mai, it would, wouldn't be nearly as much to see her fight. My respect for her has gone up about 8,000 points. They swapped. There's also a delayed gratification going on because they've all been around. They haven't really fought together much. Oh, that was amazing. Got both his eyes. <gasps> oh no. What in the world? Did they just get taken out? Uh, can you not keep up the energy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's leech seed. This is proof that nature is terrible. It must be destroyed. <laughs> Out of all the attacks, the punches are the most brutal. This is true. There's that conscience. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, now he would doesn't have a lot of value for himself, does he? You were just the first wave. Yeah, I survive. I think is that's the key. What just happened? We just dropped in. Yes! This is a very powerful second wave. Second and final wave. And if it's not them, you know, we got we got Gojo. So pretty confident. Although he, there's a barrier, right? He'll find his way over here eventually. It feels like with the show having established Gojo as being that amazing, it now has to jump through hoops to make sure he can't show up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mugumi is pretty Great. I love shows where there's a, you know, a secondary character gunning for the protagonist slot. He's got the hidden power, right, that everyone keeps talking about. He's a chosen one in a sense, it seems, for his clan, but is struggling under that title or has rejected it, which leaves opportunity for him to come full circle and conquer it in a way that is unique to him. That's very protagonist-ish. Then there's this really interesting extra 
thing with him where he's sort of been broken down, but it ended up being a great thing for him because it seems to have helped him dispense with a lot of noise and get down to just what is purely him and what he wants, which is just to be a net good for the world, even though he's not super ambitious in what that means. Just taking the idea, I think there's something really great about recognizing that in some sense, the things you can do really well, even if they're at a small local scale, are just as big as some of the, the grandest things that people aspire to. There's a real humility to Megumi's desire to help, and it almost feels like it goes too far, where he sees himself as dispensable. And it feels like a, a really nicely realized state to be in, because it's very self-directed. He's like very connected with his own conscience. Then he's got Maki. <laughs> Damn man, the more I, I watch Soda, the more I love him. This is gonna be amazing. I'm so pumped for this. And that's the opening. Wow. What a way to start the episode. The more I watch and the more I think about Toto, the more I like him. Speaking of knowing who you are, even thinking back to his sort of comic relief introduction, there's something silly about him evaluating people based on their taste in women, right? But actually I was thinking about that and even though it sounds silly, I can understand why that would mean so much to him. If I have to pick one thing, like what is the biggest issue I think holding back guys in my life? It's having never really figured out who they are with women or having some kind of deep-seated pain or anxiety about dating or sexuality or, or romance. And it makes some sense. You know, it's a huge part of life and how we're wired. And there's something really refreshing, I think, about just being able to talk about that. Just being able to talk about how much that can mean to you. And so one way to look at Toto's desire to find out people's tastes is not so much about their tastes, but about that honesty. I mean, I think he even alludes to that. He talks about how people have boring answers. Well, what makes it boring? It's people who are playing it safe and who he feels are not willing to engage in the conversation. He's picked a lane of life, you know, and that lane of life might not be for everyone, but it's definitely not a trivial lane of life. And at least he's found something that's meaningful to him, you know? And then on top of that, he backs it up with just being great, you know, being super, super powerful, super skillful, being giving in his way. The fact that he just grabbed Maki, who's from a, a rival school in that moment, is a small touch that goes such a long way to show where his heart is. He doesn't care about school politics. He doesn't care about the faculty's agenda. He's got his eccentricities, but you can't say the guy's a, you know, a tool or a puppet or not a thinking, feeling, creating human being. There's a freedom and a power to his character that I'm really growing to love. I'm almost scouting and rescuing. Yeah, this is sort of a, a huge shock to see Inomaki go down like that. No pressure, Toto. But we also got Yuji. That's rich coming from him who's about to sacrifice his whole life. Yeah, and Panda's here! This is a wrap. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's got trauma though. He was waiting outside of that place forever in silence. Yeah, this is a lot of faith. Having gone through this once before. Pan dash. Trademark. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. This is all just a training exercise for Toto. Tough love. Sink or swim. Indeed. Everyone is learning to love Toto. <laughs> He's the kind of guy you never, you can't really count out, you know? There's a little X factor to people like that that makes them dangerous. I'm becoming a little bit weird in my old age in the, in the sense that I'm starting to believe in magic. Like, I've been exposed to this bizarre metaphysical line of thinking for so long that I really hated about how words form your reality, that you can think things into existence, and the idea always repulsed me, and it still repulses me, if that's somehow supposed to be a substitute for <laughs> actually doing difficult things and, you know, fighting to make things happen for you, being fully open to what is and then doing your best to become the person that you want to be, you know. But one way I've sort of softened on that is that what you believe will largely impact the things you choose to act on. But the thing is, actually, we know very little. One of our biggest blind spots is the idea that we can predict or that we can clearly trace our actions to an expected outcome. The truth is we just don't know. And so a lot of the time, thoughts that things won't work out, as real as they feel, are just not correct. And also the level of validity those thoughts seem to contain is based less on accurate assessment than it is on just habit of thought. And so given that information, if that's true, the strategy seems to be something like avoid the risks that are actually game over, that seem they would likely lead to death, let's say, and then simultaneously put yourself 
yourself in every situation possible that puts you in the running to have great things happen. Conceptually, at least, when you enter into a new field or activity, one foray into it, you know, one finished project or one crossing of a certain threshold takes you from the realm of zero possibility to infinite possibility. And imagining where you'll fall in that infinite potential is fruitless because you don't know. The point is to just get yourself into that realm of infinite potential. And it's especially important to enter that realm if the only risk there is an emotional hit you know, like some embarrassment or whatever. I say all that to say, for people like Toto, who have already sort of cleared all that out, there's nothing that's dragging them down. They're, they're so aerodynamic in their actions because they just live in that world of desire and passion and ambition to immediate action. They've already done the process of habitualizing themselves into that. That makes them so fast and so deadly that you can never count them out. And they will do what seems like the impossible because as a spectator, your conception of what's possible and impossible is wrong. And it's wrong partly because you've learned through reinforcing these ideas for yourself that those things don't happen. So in that sense, I think words and thoughts, they do create a sort of magic because they unlock that. They dispense with all these lies masquerading as truth about what's possible. Sort of, it can project. Let's discuss Mojito. <laughs> How do we know his name? We made a promise, deeper than any promise we've ever made. Death to you. <laughs> if I had a dollar for every time someone said he's fast in anime. If I had a dollar for every, every time someone judged a fighting technique while fighting an anime. Is this it? Can he nail the timing? Oh, shot of Junpei there. That hurt. Not quite, not quite. Still not fully connected. Speaking of things being in the way. My friend. <laughs> Every sentence must start with, Oh! Getting it from two, two fronts right now. Perfect balance, no waste. <laughs> Worst of all. Worse than Junpei's, Junpei's death. It interfered with our discussions about big asses. Have you forgotten your movie training? And just for good measure, the left hand. <laughs> this, this villain is just sort of stunned what, what is happening. I thought we were fighting. Thank you. Best of friend Yes. No sorcerer. It's a lot of faith to put on it. We would enter elite ranks. And he's, he's drooling. This sort of space itself. He got it! So never had any doubt, did he? I just love how he turned, turned into this unlikely but amazing teacher. It's out of nowhere. All eyes were on Gojo. <laughs> what is Gojo doing? He's uh, on the coolest driver's high. Yeah, in a very short time. Like, literally, this is a couple hours span, right? And his understanding now is like that of heaven and earth. And the difference between Toto and other teachers was that Toto just believed and told him he could do it. <laughs> and cooking metaphor. It works though. He's just right down to the basics. Women, eating, fighting. Speaking of connected to nature. Well, that was five minutes ago. This is now. Once again, humans at a huge disadvantage. Right, they have a limit. And now that you've done your, your homework, no reason to hold back. <laughs> We've already accomplished our main goal. Now it's time for our secondary goal. Defeat the villains. <laughs> I'm like, so happy to see Toto fighting. Oh, this teamwork though. Nice alley -oop. They look so natural together already. And a double punch. Right, they don't need a big attack to finish it off. Better! The ambition. Clever. Do like an alley-oop or something. Appreciate this land. <laughs> there you go. There's that alley-oop. Totally in sync, the love of big asses. Fear! 
You're about to die. I was thinking later after watching that episode, Toto reminds me of a, a good friend of mine who's been one of the most profound sources of wisdom and help in my life. And one of the trademarks of his sort of advice is that he pulls no punches at all. Like whatever is the harshest view he can take, he takes it. And it's not about blame. And it's not about trying to bring me down. The motivation is 100% pure. It's him having a very high ideal and not seeing buttering people up as any sort of benefit towards that ideal. His regard for his friends is true and pure, but he accepts no excuses or softness in the approach to any kind of solution when it comes down to finding solutions when dealing with obstacles his solution is to blast through them with the full force of honesty and while it's painful it's something you don't really get that much and you feel the power of just cutting through the deception you know, the wanting to protect yourself from having to take responsibility and do better. Sometimes all it takes is that kind of conviction to the truth, even if it it's tough. I think we tend to skew the other way where we're more worried about people's feelings. And that's really important and valuable. I think it's definitely a mistake to place blame, you know, or to assign an, a lower value for people for their mistakes. You don't want to do it just for the sake of being critical or for trying to serve someone a, you know, a piece of humble pie or whatever, which is often the form that advice takes. And you don't want people to be unduly hard on themselves or to ruminate in their own failings endlessly because that's not useful. But the other side is important too. You know, you don't want to live in a fantasy world where you don't have any way to improve yourself or you're already doing things as best as you can or there's no way through this or it's someone else's fault or there are too many things outside of your own control to you know affect the situation or there's not something that you could give up but are unwilling to give up that would get you exactly what you want the honesty is is critical as well there's a balance that needs to be struck between the two and i think one of them is more rare than the other at least in my experience so i understand the power of toto being this severe with him no one else is doing it so far and because Yuji's goal is aligned with actually getting better because he really understands the significance of this. He loves it. And I get it. It's like you're finally getting to the source. You know, you've been wading through kind of superficialities and niceties and social dynamics for so long when what you really want is to get your hands on that thing that you want, you know, the knowledge you've been seeking. And if you can find people who can give it to you, even though the instinct can be to run or fight, that is oftentimes a vein into the heart of exactly what you need. And beach flashback? <laughs> Oh no, he's really telling him to be more true to himself. This really is a empathetic beach flashback. You gotta be more authentic. Is it really the earth? Is it really the earth? Or is it your own ego? Hands. So much for things being meaningless, huh? <laughs> hey, be your best self, Mihito. Yeah, he just turned this into a reverse sit-up exercise and a chance to show off his abs. Oh, what a beautiful attack. So pretty. Good for you. <laughs> Wonderful. But he has a domain, doesn't he? He seems like the type. Oh no. Looking forward to the next episode though. This should be good. This is one of my favorite episodes of the show so far. And I think it's partly because of how well it was set up. The tournament arc, not even really being that much of a tournament arc. It was like a couple characters showing up, but it was just enough to give that connection to each other, both as friends and as enemies. That makes it that much more satisfying when they have a common enemy. And then the Yuji Toto stuff just continues to deliver as one of my favorite dynamics in the show so far. So I can't wait to see where this goes. Juju Sampo. I saw this coat rack thing. No coats were hung that day. Indeed. <laughs> Much like that Jujutsu Sapo, that's never gonna happen. It's total fantasy. <laughs>